Hello, I am Seema and welcome to part 40 of the chapter Organic Chemistry, Some Basic Principles and Techniques. We were doing the qualitative analysis of organic compounds and I explained how we prepare lysense extract and how we use the lysense extract to test for nitrogen and sulfur. Lysense extract is used to test the presence of nitrogen, sulfur and halogens. So, in this video, I'm going to start with the third part. How do we use the Lysenz extract to test for the presence of halogens? So, let us begin. The test for halogens. We take the sodium extract and we make it react with nitric acid and silver nitrate. Do you know what? The nitric acid is an oxidizing agent. It is just added in order to uh, break away the... Uh, the, pre the halogen from the sodium salt and the silver nitrate provides the silver that will result in the formation of a silver salt of the uh, of the, um, the halogen now the silver the halogens that we test for are chlorine bromine and iodine and all three they form different uh, they have some differences due to which we can identify which halogen is it so let's see what happens when you use the sodium extract you acidify it with silver uh, sorry uh, with nitric acid and with silver nitrate you make it react it results in the formation of a silver halide the silver halide could be silver chloride agcl it could be agbr or it could be agi now as soon as the halide is formed it results in the form the halide is a precipitate that is it is actually insoluble in water at least so since you find a white precipitate, which is insoluble, precipitate means it's an insoluble substance and you add ammonium hydroxide to it. The ammonium hydroxide is added to confirm the presence of the white precipitate. The moment you get a white precipitate, you get an idea that this must be chlorine. But if you add ammonium, uh, if you add uh, what? Ammonium hydroxide uh, solution to it, it, res it dissolves in it. And the white color, the white precipitate, it kind of disappears. When it dissolves, it disappears. So you get a white precipitate, you get an idea it's chlorine, you add ammonium hydroxide to it, and it kind of vanishes because it dissolves. And just like when you add sugar to water, the sugar disappears. Similarly, the white precipitate, it dissolves and it disappears. So that shows the presence of chlorine. If instead of getting a white precipitate, as soon as you added the silver nitrate and nitric acid to the sodium extract, if you got a yellow precipitate, the yellow precipitate could be either bromine or iodine, right? It could be bromine or iodine. So how would you know whether it's bromine or iodine? You again add so ammonium hydroxide to it. On adding ammonium hydroxide, if some of it dissolves, if some of the turbidity decreases, then it is bromine. But if it is absolutely insoluble, nothing happens when you add ammonium hydroxide to it. It means it is iodine. So that is how you would test the presence of the halogens. Now, as I told you, when we are testing for organic compounds, there is a possibility of multiple functional groups. There is a possibility of different elements being present in the same compound. So there is a possibility that the compound already had nitrogen and sulfur. So if nitrogen and sulfur were also present in the compound, you would not want them to be interfering in your reactions. So what you do, the nitric acid that you add, you tested, the first steps are, you will be testing for nitrogen and uh, sulfur. So in the Lessens test, if you got positive tests for nitrogen and sulfur, you already know there is uh, nitrogen and sulfur. So what should you do in order to decompose them to break down those so that they don't interfere with our test the nitric acid that is added is added in excess and then the solution is boiled with it so if nitrogen or sulfur are also present in the compound the sodium fusion extract is boiled with concentrated nitric acid so that it decomposes the sodium cyanide and the sodium sulfide which are present due in the sodium extract formed during the lysens extract preparation once they decompose, then you add the silver nitrate in order to get your precipitate of uh, the precipitate of the halogen. If you don't do that, you will get interfering reactions with cyanide and sulfide, which you don't want. So that is how you test the presence of halogens. 
We now come to the last element that we test and that is phosphorus. How do we test for the presence of phosphorus? You know, this is not done with the help of the Lysenz extract. But yet, we will be getting the sodium salt first of phosphorus. Let's see how. The compound is first heated with an oxidizing agent and we usually use sodium peroxide. Sodium peroxide, why do we use an oxidizing agent? Something that will provide the oxygen. So when you use sodium, sodium being a highly reactive metal, somewhat like preparing the sodium extract, you do not, in, when you prepare the sodium extract, you do not get the phosphate. But if you use sodium peroxide, you get the sodium phosphate, that is the phosphorus of the compound, combines with it and results with the sodium peroxide and results in the formation of sodium phosphate. Now this phosphate, the phosphorus present in the compound is oxidized to a phosphate. Then it is further made to react with nitric acid so that you get phosphoric acid. Phosphoric acid is also a phosphate, but it is a phosphate of hydrogen. So we take the sodium phosphate, make it react with nitric acid, which also is an oxidizing agent, results in the formation of phosphoric acid and sodium nitrate is formed. So your main compound here, the ones, it is sodium phosphate, nitric acid and H3PO4 is what you get. This is just a byproduct. Then this H3PO4 is used up here in the next step. So now the solution this, the solution which consists of all of this, but our main focus is on the reaction of the nitric acid with HNO3 is then treated with ammonium molybdate. When you make it react with ammonium molybdate, and of course nitric acid is already present in the mixture, the phosphoric acid, the nitric acid and ammonium molybdate, it results in the formation of ammonium Phosphomolybdate. The phosphomolybdate that is formed is yellow in color. So the appearance of yellow color, or it's uh, I mean if it precip the precipitate settles down in either case whether the solution turns yellow or it turns into a precipitate which settles down. If it is yellow in color, it means ammonium phosphomolybdate has been formed and it indicates the presence of phosphorus. So this is how we come to know the presence of halogens and phosphorus in the organic compounds. So with this, the qualitative analysis of the organic compound finishes here. Now you know what are the elements present in the compound. The next step would be to find out the percentage composition. Once you know the percentage composition, so the next step would involve not qualitative analysis, but quantitative, because you would want, in order to know the mathematical uh, what, uh, uh, composition of it, the percentage composition, you need to know what is the quantity of each element in the compound. After identifying the elements, the next step would be to find out the quantity. So in the next video, we are going to start with the quantitative analysis of the compounds. So with this, I'll wrap up today's video. If you found it helpful, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, recommend it to your friends, and please keep returning for more videos in chemistry. Thank you for watching and bye-bye for now.